the cell which was thought to be a simple little lump of albuminous combination of carbon by the formulators of the theory of evolution has such an extraordinary design. This magnificent system certainly could not have emerged by chance as the theory of evolution claims. When all these details of cell biology were revealed and understood, the theory of evolution suffered a great blow. Today, many of the world's distinguished scientists acknowledge that life as embodied in the living cell cannot be a product of chance. A very superior design underlies all aspects of life. One of these scientists is Michael Behe, an acclaimed American professor of biochemistry. He refers to the fact of design in the cell as revealed by modern science as follows. I think the conclusion of design is a scientific one, an empirical one, based completely on the observable system the universe and life were intended, that they are the product of intelligent activity. And I'd just like to point out that this this idea comes from the progress of science. It is not from not what we do not know, but is rather from what we have learned over the past 50 years. Indeed, science shows that all living beings have been brought into being as a result of conscious creation. Failing to explain the complex systems in a single living cell the theory of evolution also fails to explain the designs in the bodies of living things. For instance, the aerodynamic in a bird wing, the amazing hunting methods of a spider, an insect made to resemble a leaf so that it can camouflage itself, the eye design on a butterfly's wings, or the feeling of compassion in animals. Life, with all its details perfectly designed, is obviously the result of superior creation. That superior creator is the almighty God, the Lord of the heavens, the earth, and everything in between. When you look around you, out in open air and in a broad field, you can readily see all objects farthest and closest to you in all their colours, shapes and size. This view, which you have obtained without making any effort, is produced as a result of numerous complex reactions and interactions in your body. Now, let us look at these complicated operations closer. The human eye has a fully automatic mechanism that works perfectly. It is made up of the combination of 40 different basic parts, and all these parts have critical functions in the process of seeing. Any defect or disability in even one of these parts would make seeing impossible. The transparent layer in the front part of the eye is cornea. Right behind 
lies the iris. Giving the eye its color, the iris adjusts its size automatically according to the sharpness of light thanks to the muscles attached to it. For example, if we are in a dark place, the iris widens to take in as much light as possible. When light increases, it shrinks to decrease the amount of light coming into the eye. The automatic adjustment system in the iris works like this. The moment light comes into the eye, a nerve impulse travels to the brain and gives a message about the existence and brightness of the light. The brain immediately sends back a signal and orders how much the muscles around the iris will contract. Another eye mechanism working parallel to this structure is the lens. The duty of the lens is to focus the light coming to the eye onto the retina layer at the back of the eye. Thanks to the movement of the muscles around the lens, light rays coming to the eye from different angles and distances can always be focused on the retina. All the systems we have mentioned are far smaller, yet far more superior to the mechanical devices designed by the use of the latest technology in order to imitate the eye. Even the most advanced artificial imaging system in the world remains extremely simple and primitive compared to the eye. When we think of the effort and knowledge that has been put into developing these artificial imaging systems, we can understand with what a superior creation the eye is made. If we examine a single cell in the eye at the microscopic level, the superiority of this creation will be further revealed. Let us suppose that we look at a crystal bowl full of fruit. The light rays coming from this bowl to our eye pass through the cornea and iris and are focused on the retina by the lens. So, what happens in the retina so that the retinal cells can perceive light? When light particles, also called photons, strike the cells in the retina, they produce a cascading effect like a row of dominoes carefully arranged one after the other. The first of these dominoes in the retinal cells is a molecule called 11-cis-retinol. When a photon of light interacts with it, this molecule changes shape. This forces a change in the shape of another protein, rhodopsin, to which it is tightly bound. Now, rhodopsin takes such a form that it can stick to another protein called transducin, which was already present in the cell, but with which it could not interact before due to its shape's incompatibility. After this union, another molecule called GDP also joins in this group. Now, two proteins, rhodopsin and transducin, and a chemical molecule called GDP have bound together. However, the process has just begun. The compound called GDP now has the proper form to bind to another protein called phosphodiesterase, which always exists in the cell. After this bonding, the shape of the molecule that is produced would trigger a mechanism that will start a series of chemical reactions in the cell. This mechanism changes the ion concentration in the cell and produces electrical energy this energy stimulates the nerves lying right at the back of the retinal cell. Consequently, the image that came to the eye as a photon of light sets on its journey in the form of an electrical signal. This signal contains visual information about the object outside. In order for 